part two. There's a lot to get through, so I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly. They're not in any particular order. Um, I think some of the artists are grouped together, but um, yeah, we'll we'll just get into it. Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to show these off. Uh, the Able Tasman's a cup of tea and a lie down. I haven't had this in a while, but it sort of has a lot more, I guess, um, 60s psychedelic influence mixed in with uh, Jangle Pop. Um, yeah, really cool record it's on uh, the yellow and red Flying Nun label. What year was this? I would say this is 85. There's a complete guess though, so I could be wrong. Um, but this is a good one to get. This is the Chills Kaleidoscope World. Um, it has all, all the big hits are on here. This is basically a compilation of their early singles. Um, you, you know, you can get them on seven inch. Um, Pink Frost is a big, big track on here. So it's, I, I love this looking at it. Satin Doll, Doll Drums, uh, Kaleidoscope World. Really wonderful. And uh, I really like the um, custom labels. And if you, you probably can't see them. The camera's not going to focus on them um, here. You, this got reissued with bonus material a few years ago, um, but yeah, if you're looking for a one-stop chills record, instead of getting the seven inches, um, yeah, that's the one to go for, Kaleidoscope World. Eight songs from the chills. Um, here's uh, David Kilgore of The Clean. I was playing this just the other day. Uh, it's a really wonderful... Um, it sounds a little dated because it was recorded in 1991, but it's a really nice indie jangly. It sounds very uh, autumnal um, record, really lush uh, jangly uh, indie record. Um, yeah, I don't know why. To me, it sounds very much like autumn. Um, there's a couple of tracks on here that are quite well known. The main track being uh, you, you Forget. I have, a, have a listen to that. There's uh, quite a few elements of shoegaze uh, mixed into this. Uh, you can tell. That was the, the end sound or the sound that was coming in. Uh, yeah, there you go. I guess, yeah, for 1991, um, yeah, some of the, the shoegazy sounds are really starting to come out. Wonderful record. Um, here come the cars. This actually should not be in the pile, but I must have accidentally put it in. But it could be a Fly Nun record. So I'll show you really quick. This is a Conch by the Builders. Um, it's sort of like a New Zealand, New Zealand mixture of the fall and talking heads in parts. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's a big call, but I reckon this is a really killer record. Um, I know, Mike, uh, you know what's up with this record. Uh, you, you know how good this is. Uh, completely underrated. Not on Flying Nun. But um, yeah, what I, what I was going to show was uh, this record here. This is one of the really, I suppose, rare or harder to find pieces. Um, this wasn't cheap, but it's worth every every cent. Um, this is Beaten Hearts by the Builders. Look at that cover there. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, Bill Doreen is the man behind the Builders. Um, they have many, many releases under different names and aliases. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. And it also has these really cool custom labels here. Um, this came out in 1982, so it's uh, very early on in the Flying Nun catalog. Really great. I love this. It's very it's very hard to describe. Um, I'm not going to try. All right. I'll move this along to here. And we're going to fast forward some years. I think this was been, what, 86, 87? Oh, 1990. Um, yeah, this is this is a great, a great record. 1990. This is The Size of Food by the Jean-Paul Sartre Experience. Um, Really big atmospheric shoegazy type songs. Uh, check out the track Elemental. Um, yeah, a really great um, Wellington. Are they Wellington band? I know it was definitely recorded in Wellington. Um, I really should know that. <laughs> I could edit this out, but I'm not going to. Um, yeah, really great. Um, yeah, early early nineties sound. Um, yeah, very cool. I really like that record. I really like it. Um, this is uh, their first EP. They're the same band. Um, this is a perfect EP for me. There's some really wonderful tracks on here. You got your um, really cool inner sleeve there. Um, yeah, this is this is perfect. Look at that's the back. It's a really cool inner sleeve, isn't it? A really cool printed inner. 
So what we have next is uh, Love Songs by the Jean-Paul Sartre Experience. So this is, just just by the way, that's the most horrible, I'll show you the thing, blackface ever. That's terrible, look at that. <laughs> so so this is a European release, basically, um, on Communion Records. So it's basically the same as this, but it has about three or four um, bonus tracks on it. Um, so yeah, it, it's cool just to have the extra tracks on there. But uh, yeah, um, licensed from Flying Nun. All right. This is, oh yeah, we're getting to the, the weird section. Um, completely underrated band that I talk about heaps. Uh, the Skeptics, this is Amalgam. Uh, weird and dark. Um, great. I'm going to start spinning this up a bit um, just because I've got a lot to get through. This is uh, Sensible Shoes. Or oh, the piece is called Sensible, 10 inch. Um, yeah, very weird, very dark. Strange experimental music. This is this is the masterpiece. This is the one to check out. Uh, I'm out uh, sorry, it's called Skeptics 3, isn't it? Um, yeah, really wonderful. It's an, another original pressing. Uh, Chris Knox Seizure, the man who really helped uh, push the label forward. Uh, it's a very cool uh, label there. Um, the track that most people know on here is uh, Not Given Lightly. There you go. Great. That is on this album, isn't it? Yes, it is. Cool. Um, all right. This is uh, Chris Knox's band with Alec Bathgate. This is Tall Dwarf's Canned Music. This one is very hard to find these days. I picked this up uh, about, when was I in Dunedin? About four years ago. About four years ago. Um, this is uh the that this what's it called? That's that's the long and short of it. So the first the side one is thirty three and side four is forty five RPM. Um, yeah, it comes with this really cool booklet on the inside. It's actually a comic written by Chris Knox, and I think from memory, there's a really cool insert in here too. But I could be mistaken. No, not mistaken. Um, yeah, look at that. So you could spin your records on a piece of cardboard. That's very cool. Actually, I should try this out and I haven't tried it out yet. Um, yeah. I mean, this artwork for me, you know, really typifies uh, the flying nun look and feel in the early days and the style that was going on. Uh, yeah, this is a really immaculate copy that I I picked up. Um, goes for a lot these days. Um, but I'm really happy to have it. Um, probably one of my favorite uh, tall, tall Dwarfs releases. Um, this is Slug Bucket Hairy Breath. No, it's not on mine too. This is Throw a Sicky by Tall Dwarfs. Um, I sort of like, it's sort of a sister companion piece with a uh, Slug Bucket Hairy Breath Monster. Um, these two go together quite well. Just, just really weird, homemade, um, quirky, experimental. Just, just really strange, but really cool music. Um, Tall Dwarfs, uh, Lewis Likes His Daily Dip. Fantastic. Uh, Tall Dwarf's Dogma. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is cool. I'm just just thinking the, the first track just makes me smile on this. Oh, I'm not going to explain why. It just, it's just a very funny track. Uh, this is my favorite Bats record, Daddy's Highway, another original. Um, yeah, this is my favorite uh, Bats record, so please check this one out. I've actually got quite a lot of Bats, so I'll move through these quickly. Um, I'll listen to this this morning, the Bats, the Law of Things. The Bats Made Up in Blue. Um, this is a really great EP. Just just absolute classic tracks on here. Um, Trouble in This Town is, is really wonderful. Great. Uh, a 90s release. Uh, this is quite hard to find these days. Uh, Couch Master. Check out the track Afternoon in Bed. Really wonderful. Jesus, still going. Um, we've got uh, Free All the Monsters by The Bats. Really great. This is a later release from a few years ago that I really enjoy. A uh, bit of a return to form. Uh, this is their first EP, um, By Night. Um, really good one. Um, I really like this EP. Um, check out the track, I Go Wild. Really great. And the last one of my bats collection is, and here is music for the by the fireside, for the fireside. For the fireside. This one's a little bit noisy, but uh, yeah, really happy to, to get this one. 
pump through those. Well, we did that in about 11 minutes. Jesus, should we, uh, should we do some more? What I might do is I'm going to show you some seven inches just to break it up a little bit. Um, sorry about the noise. I feel like the, the microphone could be a bit sensitive. And this is Death and the Maiden by the Villains, uh, a really classic uh, New Zealand single. Um, really catchy. The till, Chills Dull Drums. Um, this is the Chills um, Green Eyed Owl, and I'll only see you again. This was a gift from a, a good friend. Um, you can only get this. As, this comes as part of a record called Brave Worlds in certain pressings. I don't have the record, but I've got the 7-inch. Uh, this is the reissue of uh, Randolph's Going Home um, by Shane Carter and Peter Jeffries. Uh, Shane Carter's in Straight Jacket Fits and Dimmer. Um, this was a gift from uh, Christian Mizzy a long time ago. The Bats, um, the Black and the Blue from the album Fear of God. I don't have that record, but I have the single. Um, this is uh, Chris Hazelwood. Um, the, the EP is just called Gun. Oh, no, well, it's actually just called Surf's Up in Malibu. So uh, Chris Hazelwood was the guitar player for um, King Loser. Um, yeah, awesome. Awesome, really good. Uh, just garage, surf, rock, um, punk stuff. Um, Demo Crystallator, this is a, a classic uh, mid-90s uh, track. Uh, yeah, w wonderful on Flying Nun with Sub Pop. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shane, Shane Card, I said before, was in Straight Jacket Fits. Um, the 3Ds, Beautiful Things. Awesome band that should have gotten really big. You know, they, they really almost slotted in with um, that sort of sub-pop grungy sound. Well, not really grunge, but they could have, I feel like they could have sort of found a bit of a niche uh, in, in that market a little bit. Um, this is another one, Outer Space, uh, class, classic, classic track. Um, always good to fun, fun to play out if you're doing a DJ set or something. Uh, this is uh, King Loser, Stay Away to Heaven. Um, classic uh, Pink Frost, The Chills. That's the the classic. I recommend you check out this track, uh, Pink Frost. Yeah, they're definitely worth a listen. And, oh yeah, this is a weird one. Uh, this is a band called The Great and Washed, which is basically the clean side project. Now, this these two were really cheap because they, they are, the records are destroyed because the original presses came in a it was like a plastic vinyl sleeve with paint splatter on them and they were cut out of a big i think it was a shower curtain um so there's only like you know i think there's a hundred of these pressed or something like that but because of this sleeve and the vinyl and the plastic i uh, started melting onto the grooves and basically they ruined every known pressing of this so i have it they're not really worth selling to get rid of they're not really worth anything um so I'm just keeping them, but you can't you can't play them, and um, they're, they're completely destroyed. I'll put a little photo up of what the actual uh, packaging looks like. It'd be cool to get the packaging at some point, just because. Um, but yeah, it's just just a really classic example of a complete fuck up. One of many stuff ups by the label in the early days. Um, that's a whole other story. Um, in terms of, anyway doesn't matter they they uh they lost a lot of master tapes and just in terms of like being an indie label going up from the ground they made a lot of mistakes and a lot of things you know didn't go quite right but then again a lot of things went completely right and released a lot of amazing music and uh you know a lot of people give them shit these days but they they did some amazing things for new zealand um and some amazing amazing artists got to put out their stuff which is which is amazing so um yeah that's uh, part one I reckon I'll be able to get most of part two out today in the second video and we'll be there. All right, guys, thank you so much. I, I imagine if you live in New Zealand and you know the label, this is probably much more of an interesting video to you rather than maybe people who watch who aren't so familiar with the label. But, you know, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's the end. All right, guys, thank you again. I will be seeing you very soon. Cheers.